our team kit for the month. Today we'll be using the Penguin Place stamp set and punch with the matching celebration DSP called Playful, no, P Penguin Playmates. Go and hold the life lit and then we'll get started. One second, my camera doesn't want to flip. There we go. All right. So I have made four different cards using all the same stamp set, the Penguin Place, but I coordinated it with the Celebration DSP. And I've used a lot of the images to cut out of the paper and just two different techniques of how to create our little penguins as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We'll do maybe the trickiest one first this time. Not so much tricky, but just options for this one. Make sure you can see it okay. All right, so this one I've actually embossed with black embossing powder. You can use memento ink if you wanted to, but I like kind of that shine that happens when I use the embossing powder. I'm gonna go ahead and show you quickly how to emboss. We've talked about that recently, of how, how magical it is. And I rarely do it on video because it's a little lengthy and it um, is messy a little bit. And also it's loud, but we will go ahead and show you how to make one of these cute little penguins using the black emboss embossing powder. All right. So you'll need a piece of basic white. And it, my tip to you is to look at your punch before you stamp on paper. And I can tell that this penguin needs to be up on the top of the paper and make sure his head's at the top as well to fit it in easily. You can see my other penguins I've made right here. Then for embossing, I like to use our retired item, but you can find these anywhere now. It's a little embossing buddy to wipe that over your paper that you'll be stamping on. And then we need Versamark ink, which is a clear ink, and your embossing powder. I also like to have a piece of scrap paper that I just fold in half and place over my works area. Like that. Let me grab our cute little penguin and I'm going to ink him up in that clear Versamark ink. So when I ink him, you will not be able to see him at all. Well, he's very faint. Get him nice and good and then stamp him right there. Perfect. Grab your embossing powder. I like to just, just shake a little bit on top and over and let it slide off. And shimmy it around, make sure we get it coated all over. Tap off the excess. And if it looks like it needs another coating, I'll just go over it again. And tap off. We'll set that aside real quick as we clean up the extra powder that we've poured into the, on the onto the scrap paper. What I do is I just gather the two ends so it forms in my center and then I pour it in. Let me move it so you can see that real quick. There's my container and I just pour that right in back into that powder and use it over and over and over again. This little, little tiny container lasts me easily two to five years depending on how often you emboss. Kind of crazy, but it's, I think it's like $5. Actually, they've combined it, so you can get lots of colors together now instead of just the one. Okay, so now that we have this guy all nice and powdered up, we're going to take our heating tool. It's going to get a little loud, but just it'll be quick. And just keep your eye on this cute little penguin. Oh. First, let me show you my heating tool. This is the Stamping Up heating tool. And it kind of is like a blow dryer, but awesome and great for crafts. There's two settings. And you're going to do a circular motion towards the penguin.
All right, so we had it go until all of the powder melted and it has a shine all over the place. Look at that, isn't that awesome? Love that cute little penguin. All right, let's put all those things away and that's it. That's how we make an embossed black penguin with those quick, easy steps. I would then grab my punch and make sure it's cooled down. If it's not, you'll feel that it's a little tacky, but he's nice and smooth. He's good to go. Put your punch in, line him up, and we'll punch out our cute little guy. Just like that. All right, now we're ready to make the rest of the card. So I already had one ready to go. So we have our two penguins, and we're gonna need to stamp on one. Actually stamp on both of them. So let me grab my foam mat back in here. And that scrap of basic white. To make our cute little bow. Oh, which reminds me, I didn't put that one on a block. Let me grab my stamp set from in here. And there's 28 stamps in this set, which is crazy. That's a lot of little pieces. But nicely, you can have it organized in your stamp case because it has the outline underneath it. And you just line it up to where it goes. And you can see all the ones that we are using today based off of what's missing. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our fresh freesia. And we're gonna make a little bow with this one and then fussy cut it out. And then I'm also gonna stamp directly onto one of the penguins to make that the little guy. Get that nice and inked up. Well, that's pretty good. I might do one more. There we go. And then clean off our block and our bow and close up the ink. Let's grab out our Misty Moonlight. It's the other ink color we're using today. Matches with that DSP. And it's just a great all around color. We're gonna ink up this bow again, but this time we're gonna put it directly on our cute little penguin, right at his neck. Cute. Okay. While we have the ink out, let's go ahead and finish our stamping on our other parts. So I'm gonna need our strip of Just Jade and a little bigger strip of Just It Jade. These you'll have all on your kit, or I have all the list of measurements and supplies on my blog after this video. Or in the comments or links below. All right, so we need the feet as the next item. So, oh, we don't need it in blue though. That was a close one. Whew, let's do the words first. I was looking at our penguin and seeing that he was feetless and we want to add that but we'll do clipso coral in just a second okay let's get our words is what we need so we're using the happy birthday so we're gonna ink that one up and you can tell i like to put my small inks on big blocks just at the very top and that makes it so i'm less likely to get ink all over the place and just stamp that once we're going to fussy cut that out in a second and we're going to use to the coolest kid ever. You see, I have this on slightly crooked. So let's go ahead and use our grid paper here and help me line that up. We're gonna put it just along one of the lines in the grid. Grab your clear block and find a bottom to it. Let's actually we'll use the top one and line up your bottom to another line on your grid and pick it up. And that's a lot more straight. If it's crooked now, it's mostly because of the way that I stamp it and not how it is on the block. To the coolest friend ever. So when we look at this stamp set, you usually will think that it's meant just for Christmas, but it can be used for so much more, especially since it has those cute balloons, which if you look at that stamp balloon right there and you have the old balloon punch, they match, which is a great, great um, find that my friend Lisa Marie told me. So if you still have that balloon punch, use it also for when you're stamping those balloons. Okay, hopefully that's all of our Misty Moonlight. And then we need to grab 
our coral for his feet and the beak. You could do any color, but I really like the coral for these images. I tried the pumpkin. I tried more of a yellow look to it. Nothing looked good for to me except for this one. All right, so you have his little feet inked on there. And now we just need his cute little beak, which is the tiniest little thing. So I have a very small block I'll be using to put our little beak on there. And I see the beak done a couple different ways, really close to this black line here on his forehead, or even a little bit below. I like to go mine just a little bit below. There's one. And it's going to get him to go on. Oh, two. There we go. Close that up and let's get ready to assemble. So that one's ready. This one needs to be fussy cut out. And I'm just going to do a sh cut underneath each of the lines of words and above it to go all the way through. And then we'll come to this side and trim. Just like that. So our birthday should be mostly ready. Maybe a little bit shorter on the other side there. And our happy. We can trim that down a little bit too. There we go. Take our scraps and set them aside. I'm gonna go ahead and slide this guy maybe underneath so he's ready for us when we need him next. Oop, and we need to cut out our fussy cut, our little bow. I don't like using big pieces, so I'll trim it down first to a more manageable size and then just cut along those edges. And go around like that. There we go, the tiniest little bow there. All right, now I think we're ready to assemble. So I just have a thick basic white card base for this one. And the idea of this is kind of make that look like one giant present. Grab your bone folder so we can get that nice and creased better. When I send them in the kit, they, I have them folded, but I don't use my bone folder. So just kind of a soft fold on there. So we want to finish that fold. Next, we have our DSP and we're going to attach our Just Jade to them to make it look like it has a mat. But it's a fake mat because we don't have it going all the way through, which means we can adjust how thick we want it to be or how thin we want it to be. It's up to you. I'm going to use my liquid glue, though. I usually just put a little bit along the side of both of those and attach it to it. And I like the liquid glue because it gives me a chance to move it. So I'm just having this one really thin. It's up to you again how, how thin or thick you want your, your fake mat to be. I'll just push that in a little bit more. There we go. Super thin on this one. All right. Go ahead and attach this then to our card base to the center. And try to, you can use your grid paper if you want to make sure you're measured exactly center or not. I'm just kind of eyeball it. It looks pretty good. Then we have this strip of vellum. This is just a cool way to still see the paper, but give it an extra layer. And vanilla vellum is hard to attach sometimes without you seeing the adhesive. So we usually use glue dots. We're gonna use one on the top and one on the bottom. And we're gonna use it where we think we're gonna cover it. So I'll put this one pretty close to the top center. And when I glue on my bow, you won't be able to see it as well. And in fact, that's the only one I'm gonna put on. I could try to put one here and know that I'll cover it, but because of the weight of the items we'll be attaching to it, it will help hold the rest of it down. So just one glue dot for this one. Okay, 
Next, we can go ahead and glue on our happy birthday to our little penguin friend. You just do a dollop of adhesive right where you want it to be, if that's easier to attach or add it to your little tiny words as well. They're just super small, so sometimes it's easier not to have glue on that. Just make sure you're, you're putting them on order so it doesn't say birthday happy, but happy birthday. And let's go ahead and glue on her little bow as well. This one you can use either a glue dot or some liquid glue. I did a glue dot before and this time I'm trying the liquid glue and see how that works out for me. You just have to let it dry a little bit. Super cute. Okay, go ahead and add the To The Coolest Friend Ever and we want to put dimensionals on this. And because it's littler, we want to use the mini dimensionals. And you'll want a couple of them though because it's a longer piece. I think this is about two and a half inches long. And again, we're using this to help keep that vellum down. Okay, make sure your vellum's lined up where you want it to be. And then place your to the coolest friend ever on there. Oh, I shifted just a little bit so it moved. There we go. There we go. Then we're going to add dimensionals on the back of our penguins too. These ones you can use actually the larger ones because he has a good size head and a good body. He's, he's not skinny. <laughs> huh. We'll flip that over and put him to the tilt just a little bit and her leaning the other direction. Oh, and look, I lost her bow. I told you that liquid glue was going to be a little tricky to let it dry. There we go. Cute. And then we'll put her right next to there. Two cute little friends. This would be a great kid card to send. Um, lastly, we just need to add the bow to the very top to cover that glue dot. So I use either tear tape or ribbon to help me keep my twine that's on a roll like this from untwining, <laughs> from unrolling. And I like to tie my bows on the spool. We'll just do a bunny ear bow Pull it so it looks crazy and then pull the knot and adjust on both ends to the size that you want. Pull it tight again. It's kind of a, a pull and fix as you go, depending on what size you want it to be. That one looks pretty good. So we'll call it good. Line up your both ends. Take your paper snips and trim. Grab your glue dot. We're going to put the knot to the dot and pinch it off and cover up that glue dot under the vellum. Super easy. Now that this is back and done, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my washi tape and just put it over there on top of it again. And that way I'm not having that unravel back in my roll of twine. Super cute. A little bit of effort on this one. Pretty fancy because we emboss those penguins, but that's just a fun technique to add and a little bit of fussing cutting with our words. All right, let's go ahead and go to our next one and clean up just a little bit. Okay, our next one is so cute. It is not another Christmas one. It has a kind of a Christmas background to it and they're wearing their Christmas clothes or winter clothes, but has the great saying, I like you a lot. It's like a little except a lot onto it. And so it can be used for multiple things. We also have on the inside our cute little fox that we've also have cut out of our DSP and just put him in there to help finish it up. All right, let's grab these pieces. I'm using the soft sea foam as my card base. Let's go ahead and get that nice and ready. And then I have two pieces of DSP. You technically only need half of each of these, but I'll show you the way to do it where I use a whole one and just cutting half as well. And then we have our cute little guys. We need a fussy cut out from our DSP. You can see on the other side that has those stripes that we just got done using for the other card. And we have our little strip of soft sea phone to stamp our, our saying on in just a second. And this is our piece that I used for this card. So you can see 
how it once was to cover that one. And how if I wanted to, I can use this to make a whole nother card as well. All right, let's do our trimming first, and then we'll get our stamping going. Let me make room and show you how to cut that DSP. So you're gonna grab your paper trimmer out and grab your DSP, and first we need to measure. Let me grab my pencil. I always like to have a pencil in my craft room, and I usually use a mechanical pencil because I like the small tip on it. So we're gonna go over here, and on the long side, so that's the five and a quarter side, we are going to measure at the bottom at three-fourths. So I'll move it to on this end right here and just make a little mark. Then I'm going to turn it over and measure three-fourths again. So I'll line it up right here. I'll put a little pencil mark there and so I know where to cut. Now I'm gonna put this in my track, on my trimmer, from one pencil mark to the next. So you kind of turn it and play with it a little bit, make sure it's in line, and then we will cut that off. Now we have two pieces and can make two cards very similar to each other with that same design. All right, let's go ahead and glue these ones together. And then we'll glue it to our card base. This one's a fairly easy one because we're not doing a whole lot of stamping, but mostly cutting. Get that, so it has the border around it. And then these two you can save for a later date and make another card. That would be just pretty awesome. Okay, we'll glue this guy in as well, but I like to use my seal when I'm gluing my basic white. I think I told you why too. I don't like glue lines and you can see glue lines when you use white. It's kind of like wearing white pants. You don't want to see your underwear through them. So same idea, I don't want to see the glue lines. All right, let's go ahead and stamp our saying and then we'll just do some fussy cutting. I did use the Misty Moonlight as my ink of choice. And let's grab our seams. We have like a little except a lot and we need our I like you a lot. You can see this one's also very crooked. Let me fix that one for us. That same technique. Line it up on your grid paper and get mine to unstick for me. There we go. It might get loud in here in just a minute. My kids are getting anxious to come back in and play. All right, so for this bottom one, we're gonna do it first. It's like a lot, except a little. And we're gonna go to the very far left bottom, and then we can cut off the parts that we don't need. So I'm gonna go right about there. Awesome. And then we're just gonna line up our Lottel to our lot. Ink that one up and have it right above it. Perfect. Close up your ink and grab your paper snips just to trim that down a little bit closer to that side and grab dimensionals and we'll attach that to our card base. You guys are having a good Saturday. I know it's August, so it's weird to be playing with these snow creatures when it's so warm feeling right now. We'll put that on the top and I line it up so it matches with our DSP right there. And then we embellish it with just a couple of these opal rounds. Let me grab those, here they are. And I like to use the smaller ones and three of them. 
And I like these ones because they remind me a little bit of snowballs. That sparkliness of it and that perfect round shape. Two and three. I might have to adjust those a little bit. I think what we should have done is the two on the outside and save that last one for the end to get it lined up just right. I know my hand's in the way, sorry. There we go, that's looking a little bit better. Oh, I hear my boys coming. I apologize for anything you hear in the next couple minutes. <laughs> we'll keep it going. Okay, fussy cut. Grab your little bear, take your paper snips, and just work yourself around. I like to use the inside of my paper snips and not to use the edge. And then I move my paper more than I move my scissors. If I feel like I need to do a continuous cut through because it's gotten too long, then I'll just trim it off and start a new starting point. But we did a good job in getting to see that one. Just fill off a trim in him from the big 12 by 12 piece of DSP. Alrighty. So he's pretty easy to work with. He has just some very basic shapes. I do give him a haircut though. So on the very top, he has these cute little white hairs. I don't know if you can see, see if you can see that. Those little white hairs, I just trim them. Instead of giving, let him keep it. Let's go make it a rounded cut. Nobody will know. He once had little bear hair up there. Oh. So these are fun cards even for little kids to make because there isn't a lot of stamping and just more cutting. It's definitely beginner friendly. Where kids love to cut out things and kind of make their own sticker like this. So we got our bear and our cute little penguin. And you can go as close or far away as you want where it has those little edges there, his little feet there. Come into this tight spot here. Just move in the paper around the little hat. I did keep the little ball in this hat though. I feel like it's it was still needed. Not like the bare hair. Almost done with this guy, and then we'll just have our fox to cut out. Okay. And even on this DSP, if it has cute little like images. You see this little tree? That could totally be saved and used for something else. I'm gonna trim that one off and save it for later. That could be added on the front or the back or in the inside. It's just like an extra little embellishment. And this fox is just so playful. Um, and his cute little ears, his nose. We have about two more cards to go and they will go pretty quick. My son just walked in, he's ready to get playing. He has a online play date with a friend uh, who lived, who moved, so that's, that makes sense. Um, they live far away and they can play video games together, which is a, a fun idea. So they can still, still hang out. Okay, there's our three pieces. This guy will use liquid glue for him in the inside. And the other two, we'll just use dimensionals to attach them. I'll just make him so his tail's coming up and his little legs are there at the bottom. And get some dimensionals. At least we want one for their head, feet, head and feet. We're gonna put our bear on first. 
with him and have his arms out wide. It looks like he's ready for a hug, right? And then we'll have this little guy overlap him a little bit. But he's still super excited to see you too. There you go. We have this awesome, cute little I like you a lot. It's like a little except a lot card using our DSP as our main part. All right, let's go on to our next one and move some of these pieces out. We're gonna make this card. We have that fresh freesia as our card base for this one. And we also have some more little critters to cut out. But we've created this awesome stitch rectangle frame. I'll show you how. And then we're gonna create a fun snow hill. All right, so for that stitch rectangle, what we had to do is grab our rectangle dies with a piece of basic white. And for the sake of, of moving, you could run them at the same time. But I ran this through once, and then I had one giant rectangle. And then I basically had it so it lined up so it would be like this. And then we use that part to make our frame. If you want a thicker frame, you just get a smaller inside, and it would work as well. Super easy way. And that was, of course, ran through my die cutting machine. Okay. So we have our basic white for the inside, our DSP for the front, our little snow creatures, the frame, and our snow spot. Let me go ahead and get our card base ready, and then I'll show you how to stamp and make our snow. Oh, there we go. Off to the side here, you can kind of tell it's just a huge mess right now. As I go from one card to the next, everything just makes a pile of stuff. So I lose my bone folder. Let's add our basic white for our inside. And just put that in. There we go. And let's grab this and glue that on as well. We covered up the whole card front of this one. All right, next go ahead and attach your little frame. Just a little bit of glue, just need a lot. Because it's just so tiny, we don't want it to squish through. In fact, you probably just glue the top of it and get away because the bottom will be covered. So. Add our frame like that. And next we need our piece of basic white. Let me grab our foam mat and I'm gonna slide that underneath. And let's grab our snow. So in the stamp set, you'll see this awesome line that makes a great snow hill. But because it's photopolymer, you can adjust that to any size you want by just removing it and laying it down. So pick what kind of hill you want, because this is just gonna be our guide. I'm gonna make mine kinda like that. That looks pretty good. And then it doesn't matter what color you use. I'm going to use the Just Jade, because I will use that in a second as well. And we're gonna ink that up and get it as close to the top as we can of our basic white. So just like that. Now that I have my ink, let's go ahead and do our saying, which was be cool, be chill, be merry. Get that inked up. Put that on the bottom of our snow hill. Perfect. Okay, close up your ink. Now grab your paper snips and we are going to cut below the snow. So we're just using that as a guide. We don't want any of that green snow to show. So we're gonna cut below it. And there we go. We've created a cute little snow hill. Flip it over, we want dimensionals on the back of this.
and we'll attach that onto our card base. And I should have fussy cut those these out before. So I apologize for not because I already did the facet cutting. You guys can saw how to do that. I wish I magically could just fast forward for you guys so you don't have to watch me do this again. However, if you're watching the replay, right now would be the good time to fast forward to when we're just attaching them. We will attach them with dimensionals when I'm done cutting. Let's see how fast of a cutter I can be for these ones. Our last card uses the punch instead of stamps or the DSP to make our cute penguin. So that's another easy one to make and we've added a fun black glitter paper to it. If we have time at the very end, I'll show you a couple extra cards that were made by my friends to give you a couple more ideas of what you can make with these stamps and paper. So this cute little snowman, you just have to be careful because he has his mittens and his stick arm. So just cut over it carefully and don't go too close. If you want to save that bird on the top, you could. If this snowman was in my house right now, he'd be melting. I am getting so warm. We have my windows closed, which is our usual way of cooling down our house here in California. We give a nice breeze, but I close the windows because the kids are outside playing or there's traffic. Let's see. And this one, it's up to you if you want to go in deep and cut out down by his tail and then come back up. And make his scarf kind of fly in the wind. I should time. I should should have seen how long this took me. I'm guessing probably, ooh, maybe two minutes. I'll watch the replay myself and see. Not too bad though. Not too bad. See, it doesn't take too long. Now we just need to add dimensionals to the back of them and attach. And then for this one, we're going to start with our snowman first and then add his friends after. Usually I do, well, yeah, usually I do the outsides first, but we're going to have the snowman be our main guy. So we'll put him right here. Just make sure your fox's tail is staying on. And... Don't lose your penguin's arm and you'll be good. All right, there we go. Super cute, easy card using that DSP again. And we just added that DSP for the background here and made a cute little frame. And of course, our snow hill. All right, last card, hang in there. This one's pretty easy. So I embossed that label and we've cut out this label as well. This is from the Tasteful Label dies. And then we just had make a fake um, mat for our DSP like we did earlier and snap, stamp a couple of snow right there. I'll grab these pieces. In the DSP, you'll see there is a penguin, cute like this, that matches the punch. I didn't make any of my cards today with this one, but my friend recently showed me that you can use a post-it note. I use a usually like a piece of scrap paper and to attach it because he's hard to put into your punch. So I just make sure if you were going to, to use a cute penguin like this, you can just attach him to a post-it note and then stick him in there to punch him out. Just so you don't think we forgot our cute little punched out penguin DSP. I don't use any cards for him. Not this time at least. All right. So I have my Misty Moonlight is my card base. And we'll dump everything out and get ready to stamp first. So I have that little circle scalloped, kind of like a starburst edge there. We're going to use our Seasons Greetings and our Misty Moonlight. 
ink that up and stamp. I love this blue with the purple. I think it's a great combo. Then we're gonna grab our snowflake and we can put some snowflakes on the inside of our card on the top and the bottom. And then we're gonna do the same thing for our card base. So I'll just grab some snowflakes there, put them there. You can make a couple of them if you want. To have it look like it's snowing on the front. Super cute. All right. Oh, I do need to leave this out for a hot minute. Let's grab the bodies to our, our penguin. It's kind of a weird shape unless you know that's what it is, is a penguin body. <laughs> But we need to stamp his eyes and his little beak. And I like to have his eyes in that misty moonlight. So like a blue, a dark blue. But you can use black if you want. Or even green. Green eyes, brown eyes. Lots of choices. Alright. We'll put that color away and just grab our coral again. For our beak. and see if we can find it. I tell you, there's like lots of messes up here. Let me just push this all aside real quick. There we go. And let's see if we can find our beak somewhere. He was on the tiniest block too. There he is. Let me do a quick practice though. I feel like he was smudgy a second ago. It's looking better. Sometimes if it gets too much ink on him, it's hard to see the little details of it. Or even if I, a little bit, that's not too bad. Okay, let's go ahead and ink up his little, his little beak on both of ours. Penguins. Cute. And let's build our penguin. So this is that awesome glimmer, glitter paper that's very sparkly. So you can see that okay. And on one side it's very smooth and the other side is the glitter. We're gonna attach these guys and he has to use the liquid glue a little bit and some dry time because of that glitter. We need the liquid glue to help get into all those little, little spots. And we'll do him first, so we'll give some time for him to dry. So there's one. And then I've punched out cute little coral feet as well. So we can grab our feet and glue those on. Just do a dot at the bottom of each penguin. If you have your take your pick tool, you can use that to help you lay his feet in. I like to have his feet go out a little bit and not just straight up and down. It's a little bit more playful that way. Cute. Okay, let's set those guys aside to dry and let's go ahead and work on the front of the card. So we have our pieces of our fake mat. You'll soon find that this is one of my favorite things to do when I'm not having to mat all on the edges and just on a top and a bottom of DSP because it saves so much paper and I always have these little scraps just lying around um, from cutting off card bases or the center of cards you know I just always have these random pieces that are great to use for something like this Whoop! this one slid way too far down though so we'll peel that off a little bit and see if we can't correct it no this one might not be happy Okay, let's grab our take a pick tool, hold on. So our take a pick tool has a double in, has this little spatula side and even has a little pokey side. We're gonna use that spatula side and see if I can't carefully save this without ruining it too much. Sliding it underneath. Ooh, almost there. Oh, I cut my paper, but that's okay. All right. Can it be resaved? Can we use it again? 
Will you see all my messes? That is the question. And look at my paper right there. That's all right, that's okay. A very special friend will get this card. We'll put a little bit more glue. And this time we'll be careful. I let it dry too soon and I let it wiggle without me seeing it. There we go. Totally fixed it, it'll work. All right, like I said, there is a little crinkle there. Okay, I'll put the glue down. We'll add it to our card front. We might be able to cover most of that right there with our label. We just need some dimensionals on the back of this. Don't you love that snowflake embossing folder? It's part of a double set. So there's a mini embossing folder, but it comes with two and it's called the wintry 3D. The other one is like Christmas tree branches. Just beautiful, beautiful embossing folders that are great for Christmas. Okay. Then we just need to glue on our little penguins. And I'm using liquid glue because we're gonna have our same dimensioned, and we're gonna have that label already up too, so we don't need too much dimension on this. Grab your little season's greetings. Put it, so it looks like it's kinda, you can either have it below. Now this is where I had questions, or like if I should have it somewhere off to the side, or if I should keep it center. Up to you. I think I might keep this one off to the side this time. We'll see how we like that. All right. Let's go ahead and grab just opal rounds and we need to put this guy inside our card. So a little bit of our seal. And put that one down. And our opal rounds, or our snowballs. Put a large one and a small one and another large one down here in the bottom. And there we go. Our cute little penguin card with, that's what we've punched out our glitter paper for. So we had that one and we had our DSP friends with their fun rectangle frame our DSP friends and that DSP background to give that two-tone look and then of course our embossed penguins for our birthday card that says happy birthday to our to the coolest friend I hope you guys have learned something new today with all the tips that I went ahead and shared with you and that you enjoy this bundle if you don't have it yet be sure to add it to your list and if you aren't a demonstrator yet, I know all my royals are, but if you aren't a demonstrator yet, you can get this bundle, the stamp set and punch for free during celebration as your pick a bundle from the mini catalog. All right, you guys have a wonderful weekend. Stay cool because it's hot out there and happy stamping everyone. Goodbye.